Philippines, the Pearl of the Orient, a country with over 7,000 immaculate islands to choose from, with its cities filled with history, stories, and smiles. Often missed when one travels to Southeast Asia. If you are planning a visit, then you are up for a treat. Let us help you prepare as we're sure you have been counting the days. I lived in the Philippines for the first 20 years of my life and Wade and I have been back and forth since we started dating in 2010. So here are the things that you need to know before visiting the Philippines. Most countries visiting the Philippines don't require a visa as long as you're leaving within 30 days. Because I'm married to a true blue Filipino, I'm allowed to stay for longer than 30 days though. And make sure you check this link for the specifics of your country. Internet. We all need to stay connected. So there's free Wi-Fi at Naia. Naia is the Nino Yakino International Airport and is the main airport in Manila. However, it is a bit patchy. The moment you get out of the airport though, there will be stands selling SIM cards. You will see either Smart or Globe. Those are the two, the top two networks that are available in the Philippines. They're very similar in terms of the deals that they sell. So a lot of them would sell packages like unlimited internet, unlimited access to certain applications that are mostly used in the country. So think about Facebook, Instagram, and other messenger, uh, other messaging applications. You can also rent pocket Wi-Fi's from places like Klook, but Wade and I just personally turn on our roaming and oh, my roaming and then Wade hotspots with me. But to be honest, if work wasn't paying for my phone bill, I probably would buy a SIM card myself. The first time we visited, we didn't have generous work plans. No. So we did buy SIMs. Public transport in the Philippines. Not when you're used to countries like Australia, where else is good? Singapore. Japan. Japan. Definitely Japan. The Philippines does not compare at all. And on top of that, traffic. Well, because of that, traffic is also very bad. Your best bet when you're traveling around the city is to book a grab. For those not familiar with it, basically exactly the same as Uber. We've always found it very convenient, though if you're traveling around peak holiday times, late December, early January, you will have a bit of a wait. So book your trip in early and then finish getting dressed and head out to the street because it could be a bit of a wait. Or if you don't want to deal with that, you can also hire a private car with a driver. There's also Ancas or... Ancas. Ancas. Or is it Joyride? No. Yeah, I think Joyride. 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 Joyride is the one that you see a lot more oh. these days. I've, I've never heard of Ancas. That's the one I And I think that's because more. nobody... No, it's actually more... Po Nobody anyway, outside the Philippines can pronounce it. So they just go joyride, which we haven't explained what it is. Yeah. Which is just hiring a motorbike. So they rock up, you jump on the back, and they will weave in and out of the busy, busy traffic and get you there faster than a car would. We've never tried catching the trains. They're not very convenient. They don't seem to be in a great place that you would want to build a train. Or the other public transportation like jeepneys, because I don't fit in the back. No, you do. <laughs> It's, it's just hot. It's I just would hot. have to sit very hunched. They are designed for short of people. Oh, and of course, tricycles. We've tried that outside of Manila. Yes. In Manila, we've never tried it. We also don't, not a huge fan of the local taxis. Yeah. Um, but outside of Manila, places like Boracay, Coron, pretty much the only way to get around is tricycles. tricycles. And they're cheap, they're easy. And airy. Unlike other countries, there is no timetables for the local trains or buses, buses, jeepneys, whatever you're trying to catch. So you've just got to rock up and and wait. It's if, very often. It's very often. Yeah. They they are very frequent. The population so high they just show up every couple minutes. If you are getting lost, the locals are very friendly, more than happy to help you. Everyone speaks English, so you can ask for help from anyone. Yes, everyone speaks English. Some better, some broken, some better than native English speakers. Signs, instructions, and all the road signs are all in English as well. So it makes it very easy for a foreigner to navigate the place. However, do try to learn some of the simple words because it will be greatly appreciated by the locals. And familiarize yourself with the word 
nosebleed. So nosebleed literally is about your nose bleeding, right? Because something went wrong. But in the Philippines, when they say that, it usually, it's a funny term that means they are struggling with English so that their nose bleed so if someone is talking to them in straight up english with a thick accent or something they struggle and they said oh my nose is bleeding so when you hear that that's what they mean by that you've given them an aneurysm with your <laughs> accent or you're How speaking too quickly you or you're just using local lingo for you which means nothing for them, yeah. for them. cash is still very much king or queen when you're in the philippines so if you haven't arranged some when you're on your way there, first thing to do, get some cash at the airport. There are plenty of places that will accept card now, but many of the smaller establishments, remote islands that you might be traveling to, you just have to use cash. Uh, and the reason you need it when you're leaving the airport is tolls. So your grab driver will ask you for the 50, 100 pesos, whatever it is, on your trip 40 pesos but okay yes they're going up inflation is real people it's also recommended to bring a coin purse mm -hmm. because you'll get a lot of change a lot of coins my habit is i hate coins so it's a <laughs> default kind of that's your tip it's a default tip sometimes it's bad you get one peso sometimes you get a bit more tipping is not exactly expected but nor is it frowned upon if you don't give any in the philippines it's not like the us where you get chased if you don't do a if you don't give them a tip there is a service charge for the most part when you go to most restaurants but people still do leave some i mean we, we still do sometimes especially early on in the trip when we haven't run out of money yet there's no set rules of you know in the us they say 10 15 20 25 percent but there's no set rules of a percentage per se because there's, we, plenty, there's plenty of meals you have where we spend 150 pesos or three dollars so a, a 15 percent tip just doesn't feel like it cuts anything we usually give about five to ten percent or we just round up our bill and as i said towards the end of the trip this is where we get stingier and stingier with our tip you typically tip at restaurants hotels or services like a spa mani pedi or a haircut that is definitely where it is massively appreciated so the weather it is hot <laughs> very hot in the philippines all year round they have two seasons the dry season and the wet season so all you do is you trade a little bit of heat for a lot more humidity there are a few places in the philippines that get cool like tagaytay or baguio you've been to tagaytay i have i have but of course the main thing you go there for is the tropical weather because it's hot just dress accordingly the tricky part is going from 35 degrees outside to 15 degrees inside a little difficult to manage that because they love a good air conditioner. And if you're spending a lot of time outdoors, you're gonna be changing clothes regularly. So pack a few extra shirts. We do like to walk. Whenever we travel, Wade and I like to walk, but it is quite uncomfortable doing that in the Philippines, unless you do it first thing in the morning or at night. Filipinos don't like to walk. Like every time we go, we go there and we're with friends, we say, oh, let's just walk. It's like a 15 minute walk. And they're just like, no, they're gonna drive that. Even if it's only a five minute drive. I barely put makeup on when I'm in the Philippines. I am not wearing makeup right now because it's very hot in Sydney as well. It will just melt your bra and underwear will get sweaty so bring extra or have them wash if you don't have the space so when is the best time to visit the philippines any time of the year is actually great because there will be something that you can see or do at any given point of the year come back <laughs> monsoon season is probably the one to avoid so because you don't want non-stop rain or the flooding although even during the monsoon season welcome back wade you will still get some sunlight and it won't be raining all day monsoon season typically goes from june to october but depending how late it starts it could go well into november best time i'd say is from december to february especially if you don't mind the traffic because december is the peak season it's the holidays a lot of filipinos from overseas come back home so the population even increases during that time and everyone's going out having parties shopping and eating out christmas starts early in the philippines 
Once it's September, Christmas decors are out. So even with Wade, I would start playing Christmas songs during September. So it is quite a festive time of the year. The malls, shopping centers, but they call it mall in there, will be hectic. The traffic will be hectic. Everywhere you go will be packed. It is already quite busy as it is Manila that is. Imagine it during that time of the year. When we went home for our wedding, that was, woo, that was bad. That was in 2017. And then when we went home last year, November, end of November, that was also getting quite busy. January to Feb aren't as busy as December for, for obvious reasons. People start getting back to work. March to May though, that's the peak of summer. So the beaches will be very busy. And I personally think it's a bit too hot. Manila, just like most of the Philippines, is a very dense city. So you need to be prepared to queue for restaurants, toilets, services, transport. Anything. Anything. Definitely make a reservation. Manila, Metro Manila, Manila, Metro Manila, Metro Manila, Manila. What is it? <laughs> so think about it like... New York, New York, or Singapore, Singapore. Manila is the capital of the Philippines. It was the hub of the country, the business hub. All the universities are in there. In fact, the university that I went to and my brother are all in Manila. And it also has the trading port from when it was considered the Pearl of the Orient. But nowadays, Makati arguably is considered the central business district, and that can extend up to Taguig, or BJC, which is near Makati. Metro Manila, or the National Capital Region, or NCR, you'll hear it, is like the state, quote unquote, so to speak, right? Metro Manila is composed of 16 cities, including Manila, Quezon City, Valenzuela, I have a cheat sheet here, San Juan, Caloocan, where my high school was, and Valenzuela, which I mentioned earlier, where I was from. I highly recommend that you visit all 16 of them. We should do that, Wade. Obviously, I have been to all 16 of them, but Wade hasn't. It is used interchangeably. So when you hear someone and they say they are from Manila, they most likely mean that they are from Metro Manila or one of those 16 cities. The Philippines is in Southeast Asia. So there's no denying that it's going to feel like a trip to Asia. No. But saying that, it has had a strong Spanish and American influence on it. Right. So they were conquered by the Spaniards for just over 400 years until the Americans came and saved them, just like they saved everyone. America still has a fairly strong influence on the Philippines. You'll see it in the jeepneys, that they all speak English. The accent. The sports very, that yes. we love to watch and the brands that you'll see in the country. Yes, they all they all have a very American accent. There are a lot of Chinese and Indian immigrants. In fact, half of Mario's friends are either Chinese or half Chinese. My great great grandmother was also Chinese, and that's probably why I'm relatively lighter. Lately, there's been a few Koreans as well. So the Koreans are visiting to study nursing and English. Both things that the Philippines are known for. And this is also where the Filipinos' obsession of the lighter skin came from. The, the lighter you are, the more beautiful you are. It's really quite sad because the more, the, the wider you are, you are seen as more superior. If you are a Caucasian tourist, you will definitely feel this when you visit. We love you guys. I even married one. But we welcome everyone. We are the happiest and the friendliest bunch that you will ever meet despite all the hardships that Filipinos go through on a daily. They never forget to smile and give you a lending hand. And it will be something that you will definitely notice, probably the first thing that you will notice when you visit the Philippines. Hope they can infect you with that smile and bring you more joy as you head back home. Now that you are ready for the Philippines, we hope that you have a good time. If you are a Filipino yourself and you think that we missed anything, let us know in the comments. Join us on Instagram and TikTok for daily updates. And if you've enjoyed this, and you're looking for ideas for where to travel in the Philippines, check out our Philippines travel playlist. Stay safe and thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye.